ever feel like no matter how hard you try, life always seems to be a hot mess? In fact, the harder you try to hide it or fix it, the worse it actually gets? If so, you've totally come to the right place. My name is Maria, radical self-love leader, storyteller, and recovering people pleaser, and you are listening to the Femcast Podcast. The podcast for women who are truly ready to drop the paralyzing perfectionism and self-doubt and just live their best damn life, all while mastering the art of radical self-love and acceptance, even if life is a bit of a hot mess right now. Because as I always love to say, life is always better when it's messy. This podcast is listener discretion advised for mature content and coarse language. Hey you guys, what is up and welcome back to the Femcast. I am so excited and grateful that you're here. Today as always begins with a question, have you ever struggled with feeling like no matter how much you do, it is never enough? Have you ever felt so exhausted and depleted at the end of the day by all the things that you do day in and day out that you don't have the energy to do the simplest things to take good care of? of yourself when washing your face feels like a fucking challenge. (laughs) If so, trust me when I tell you I totally get it. And I have gotten to that point so many times. It's the point where I felt like no matter what I was doing, it was never enough for anyone. What I was doing, I was totally messing up anyway. And I didn't even have the energy left at the end of the day to do the simplest things. That's why on this episode of the Femcast, I'm going to share with you the art of doing less and saying when so that you can do less, feel better, and finally believe that who you are and what you give is in fact enough. So if you've ever struggled with feeling like no matter how much you do, it's never enough, then you're going to want to listen to this episode. So we are going to jump right into it. But before we do, I've got a little something for you. Honestly, trying to hide the hot mess never really works. All it does is create a mountain of anxiety, stress, and self-doubt, and inevitably, more hot mess. (laughs) And I should know because I'm an expert of hot messes. That's why I created the Best Hot Mess Life Practice, a meditation and daily planner to start living your best hot mess life today. This practice will help you to put your anxiety and self-doubt at ease, instantly feel better and have more confidence, Get crystal clear clarity on the actions you need to take to create massive change and cultivate the motivation and determination to take those actions. Also that you can finally start living your best life, even if it is a bit of a hot mess right now. So if you're even the least bit curious, go to thefemcoach.com right now for details. Isn't it hilarious how we can always observe something in other people around us so easily and make a comment or a decision or or come to a conclusion about it without you know ever giving it much thought or energy and yet we seem to always fail to notice the same qualities within ourselves <laughs> you know because obvious uh, oftentimes the universe works that way You know, when there's something that we're struggling to see in ourselves, it'll bring us examples of other people who are maybe falling into the same patterns or behaviors or beliefs so that we can recognize it in them and and point it out and, you know, make it obvious, you know, what's happening, what's the story and, and what it's trying to show you so that maybe, just maybe, if we would allow it, we would recognize, shit, am I doing the same thing? I swear to God, I had this moment um, like very recently and it was so obvious to me like once I had the realization. But meanwhile, I had been getting the message for months and I was paying no attention at all. Um, And when I finally got it, I was like, oh, that's what you were trying to tell me. I get it, Right. Um, as women, we have been brought up, especially if you're a people pleaser, right? Which we always talk about my struggles with being a people pleaser and a codependent 
literally my entire life. <laughs> um, when you're brought up a ple- people pleaser, it is not unlikely that you take on and do way too much. Like I'm talking way more than you need to, way more than your fair share, way more than anybody else will ever do. And you've kind of come to the conclusion that this, these are the things you have to do, right? And, and sometimes life can be very convincing that you have to do these things. But I want to encourage you really strongly to start to think about this a little bit differently. I, I just want to invite you to maybe start to question all the things that you do and your motives behind doing them and whether or not they are really necessary. Because I can tell you right now, most of the stuff that we tell ourselves are necessary for us to do and necessary for our survival and well-being and the well-being of our families and humanity as a whole is full of crap. <laughs> okay? Um, so, you know, I, I had this moment of realization because I was surrounded by women who were taking on way too much and I could see it. I could see it in them. I could see them doing more. I could see them always complaining that their plate was full and yet being the first one to put their hands up when someone needed something to say, I can do that for you. Let me take care of that. Let me go there. Let me do the thing. Let me, let me rescue you. Let me make things better. Let me show, let me show up for you and take this off your plate. I can handle this. I'm good at this. This is my, this is my thing. This is what I do. Oh my God. And it was getting exhausting just watching. And what was funny is that behind the scenes, these women were getting agitated, irritable, tired, exhausted, and resentful and saying, oh my God, I'm doing too much. I'm taking on too much. I can't keep this up anymore. I'm getting exhausted. I haven't slept. I'm tired. I'm withered. I'm all these things. I'm not taking care of myself. I'm eating, I'm eating like crap. I'm not staying hydrated. I'm drinking too much coffee because what did I just adopt a New York accent? Coffee? What what was that? (laughs) Um, (laughs) I have a lot of New Yorker friends, so maybe that's why. Um, You know, drinking a lot of coffee just because, you know, they're basically getting through their day on adrenaline because that's the only way that they can survive and get through their to-dos. And it's funny because what I noticed is that they get very, and and I'm not, trust me when I tell you, I'm like, I sound like I'm judging right now, but please know that I was also guilty of all these things, which I will share in a minute. So please don't think I'm, if this is you, please don't think I'm judging you. I get it. Um, what I noticed was, you know, they were taking on all this extra stuff. And like I said, getting resentful, doing all these things. And yet, you know, when you would tell them, Hey, babe, like slow down, say no. Do less. Take that off your plate. You don't really need to be doing that. That's not yours to take care of. You know what would happen? They would justify it. Oh, no, but, you know, I really want to do this. And it's it's really, you know, it would be really helpful. And I kind of have to because it's wrapped up in all, like, it's connected to all these other things in my life. And if I don't do this one thing, then everything else will kind of fall apart. So, like, they start to justify that they're doing the right thing. They're doing it with the best intentions. And it's really for the best and highest good of everyone involved, even though it's actually to their detriment. And so they've convinced themselves that it's the, and I'm using air quotes, right thing to do for everyone that they do it. Yet they continue to get resentful, overworked, overrun, and exhausted. So I was recognizing this and I was all coy, like, oh, well, they're clearly just taking on too much. But what do they know about self-love? <laughs> What do they know about radical self-care? Oh my goodness. I wish I could just teach all women to just not do these fucking things that they tell themselves that they need to do each, you know, day in and day out. Hmm. Well, let me just tell you, I ate my words literally this last week because, you know, as many of you know, obviously, you know, I've gone back to work full time. I have an amazing, you know, role and I work with an amazing group of people. I've also taken on a leadership role with a networking group, um, in my local area that I've been loving. I take care of two elderly parents who, you know, are struggling with their own health challenges. And, you know, I had this moment where it was just like, hmm, I've kind of taken on a lot here. And what ended up happening was, um, you know, I had taken on a lot. I had recognized that. And then 
suddenly. But, you know, I had it kind of all under control, I, I, so I thought. But then what ended up happening is shit hit the fan. My parents started to experience health issues, the networking group. We started to plan all kinds of events and activities that I wasn't aware of or, well, not so much aware of, but pre- felt prepared for. Um, it was a little bit unorganized and I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing. And I was kind of, you know, learning as I went, right? So it took a little bit more time. It wasn't that it was a bad experience. It was just a lot of learning. And then suddenly, you know, my workload at work, you know, exploded exponentially overnight. And suddenly I was in this place of overwhelm and fatigue and resentment. And wait a second, why am I doing all this? You know, and instead of sitting with that for a second and actually, you know, really assessing what it was that I was doing and, you know, what were the have to do's versus the, you know, the stuff that I could kind of, you know, put off for a little while, I just kept trying to do it all. And I kept trying and I kept trying and I kept trying and and I was literally working to the point of having heart palpitations because I was trying to do so much all at once. I was working on 20 things at the same time. I, I, I think there was moments I forgot to literally fucking breathe. Like that's how intense it got, you know? I would have my big, because I try to stay hydrated. I have my big water bottle sitting next to me. I haven't so much of, ta- you know, four o'clock would roll around and I haven't even so much as taken a sip out of it. You know, I'm in meetings back to back, one after the other, you know, jumping off one Zoom call to the next without even taking two minutes to pee. I'm ready to like pee my pants in my chair by like, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. Thank God I haven't sipped on too much water because then I have to run to the bathroom so much more often. And then, you know, I, I, I finally stop working and I realize I'm exhausted. I'm starving. No, I don't want to eat my fruit or my veggie snack. Please take me to the nearest McDonald's takeout so I can like <laughs> refuel and soothe my over anxious self. And this became the routine. And I wasn't recognizing it because I kept telling myself, but this is what I have to do. This is just what I have to do. I got to take care of this. I got to do that. I got to, I got to be here. I got to, I got to be, stay on top of this. I got to stay on top of that. And you know what ended up happening? I started to get resentful and again, overworked, overrun, exhausted. I would wake up in the morning feeling like I've not slept in weeks. Like literally in weeks, I would wake up feeling so tired. It was like taking, it felt like I had an elephant sitting on me and I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Um, I, I, you know, by, by the end of the day, I had no energy left to do anything but eat junk food and watch TV. And that was it. Um, and it was funny because even though I was doing all these things, what I was picking up from the world around me was that no matter what I did, it was actually never enough, you know? And if whatever I did do, I fucked it up. I was making the dumbest mistakes. And it was because I was doing so much all at the same time, not doing anything mindfully, just doing what I needed to do to get through each task quickly and making a shit fucking hot mess out of every situation that crossed my hands, my thoughts, my desk, whatever. And so I had a rude awakening of a moment where it was like, dang, all those women that I've been saying, oh, honey, (laughs) you're just taking on way too much and you don't even realize it. I know better. I can see it. Fuck, I was doing the exact same goddamn thing. Like literally. And it felt so natural to me, to do that, you know, because I think for so many of us, we are hardwired to behave that way. We've been taught and not just because the people around us were mean people, because that's what they were taught and that's what their mothers taught them and their mothers and so on and so on for generation that we keep need, that we, that, that we need to keep doing everything that we need to do to help everyone that we support and support literally 
our lives, our families, our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our husbands, our children. We, we need to, you know, and, and they're thinking the same thing. Our sisters are thinking the same thing and our moms are thinking the same thing and our friends are thinking the same thing. And we're all struggling with the same thing. And that is, how can I do more for everyone else? And, and, and how much do I need to do before it's actually enough? Maybe if I do this one more thing, then it'll be enough. Okay, it's, okay. I'll do the one more thing and then it'll be enough. Then I'm, then I'm done. Okay, uh, you know, I sit down, do the thing, and then I sit down and I watch it. Oh, maybe I'll just do this one more little thing and then it'll be, it's not, fuck, it'll never be enough. It'll never be enough. And I truly believe that it'll never be enough as long as we keep saying one more thing. There's a saying, you know, when you're serving coffee for people, you know, or whatever you're serving, say when. Say when you've had enough. Say when it's, you know, enough cream in your coffee or sugar or uh, enough vodka in your martini, right? Or an, a, enough wine in your glass or enough food on your plate or enough cream cheese on your bagel. <laughs> you got to say when it's enough. And the problem is we don't say it. We never say it. Just give me more. No, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do this for this person. And I'm going to do that for that person. And then it'll be enough. And oh, I'm just going to do this one more thing. And then it's never fucking enough until we say it is. We have to fucking learn to say when enough is enough. And it's in recognizing that when we say enough is enough, it's going to feel very uncomfortable. And this is where, you know, I've always preached you know, oh, take the aligned action and follow the path of least resistance. Well, for me, I'm actually going to take that back now because for me, the path of least resistance is actually doing all the things. (laughs) That's been the path of least resistance for me because for me, that's what I've been taught to believe is the way to be a good, nice person. (laughs) But the path of resistance is actually saying enough. I can't fucking do anymore. That's it. I'm capped out. I have no more capacity. Nope. Can't do it. Even if I wanted to, nope. Not available. Too much. Need to take a step back here. Need to reassess. And that is up to us. And I think the mistake that a lot of us make in, you know, dealing with these types of situations is that we're always waiting for somebody else to tell us, no, honey, no, but you've done enough now. Let me do this for you so I can help you out and take something off your plate. Fuck no, that's never going to happen. People aren't stupid. They're going to be like, oh, okay, well, she wants to do it. So I'm just going to let her do it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just going to go over here. No one's going to do that. Okay, maybe some people will. Actually, that's not true. One person actually did do, a couple people actually did do that for me this week. And I was so grateful for that. But waiting for that. And actually, if I come to think about it, now that I'm actually thinking about that moment, that moment didn't come until after I said when. So I said when first and I said, hey, listen, this is a situation I can't take on more. Like, uh, you know, and I actually, I actually, you know, came to the to the realization that even what I have on my plate right now, I actually don't know that I can get through. And this was in all areas, like not just in one. This was like across the board and everything that I was doing. Like this was a conversation in some cases I had with other people, but in most cases, like in 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 reality was a moment that I had with myself where I said to myself, no, I can't keep up at this pace. This is this isn't working for me. Um I was getting dangerously close to burnout. I was overwhelmed by all of my to-dos to the point where every time I was thinking about them, I was having a panic attack. Um, Everyone was making me feel like, or at least I was perceiving that they were making me feel like nothing I ever did was enough. Like I could do a million things and yet I didn't do this one thing. (laughs) That's what it felt like. Um, And everything I was doing, I was doing it wrong anyway because I kept fucking it up because I had too much on my plate. I wasn't doing anything mindfully. I was half-assing everything, trying to get through my list of to-dos. So I was dangerously close to burnout or, dare I say, close to burning it all down again because I couldn't keep up at the pace that I had created. Recognizing, of course, that I had created created it 
by always doing more. So I finally said, no, I cannot do this. This is just simply not going to work for me. I cannot keep up at this pace. Something's got to fucking give. And so what ended up happening is I, well, I mean, then that was the first thing is to really stop and recognize that I had taken on too much. And not just in stopping and recognizing that I had taken on too much and then going ahead and just convincing myself, but this is why it has to be this way. Really challenging myself to say, does it really have to be this way? Do I really need to do all these things? Now, stopping and recognizing is often half the battle. And once you do, fucking seize that opportunity to really ask yourself, are all these things things I really have to do? Or have I just convinced myself that I have to do it? Or have I just showed people that I will continue to do it and therefore it's become an expectation and I might need to rewire that expectation right now? Like really hard truths and uncomfortable truths. And so what I did was, you know, I started to say stop out loud. I started to say when. I started to say when to the people around me and saying, by saying, "Mm, not sure if I can do this. I might need to postpone this till next week. Can we pass this off to, to this person? Can you help me out with this? And actually became, um, started to outwardly say when, you know, I had that, I had that internal moment where I said when and enough was enough. And now I outwardly started to behave as though enough was enough by saying no, by setting the boundary, by, by clarifying the expectation, by asking for help, by delegating to others, by putting something on the back burner, right? And just reassessing everything in my sphere, everything on my to-do list and really asking myself, does it need to be done? Do I need to be the one to do it? Can this be done by someone else? Can this wait till a later date? Is this even something I really like need to prioritize or is it just something, is it like a nice to have that I can just like let go and scratch off the list and say, fuck it, I'll, you know, maybe, maybe some other day, some other time, some other season, you know, and really get honest. And in doing so, you know, I think the most uncomfortable part of all of this is saying no to other people, is saying to people, my plate is full. I don't think, saying to people, and this was hard, I don't think I can handle everything that is on my plate right now. And I had this conversation with multiple people. And it was really hard to say because so much of who I am is hardwired in people pleasing (laughs) and in doing all the things that make people happy. That actually gives me a false sense of joy. It's like a drug. If I know people around me are happy with the things that I've produced, I am so, I am over the moon excited. The minute someone makes an observation or doesn't praise me for something or is like MIA and is not commenting on all the things I've done. Oh my God, I'm failing. (laughs) I suck. They hate me. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Literally, that, that, that is how that hardwiring people pleasing mentality works. Um, and so without that, I was feeling like an utter failure and it was showing up because I was starting to make all these stupid mistakes, partly because of my mindset in this, you know, in this experience, but also because I was just doing so much. Of course I was fucking up. I wasn't doing, I wasn't paying attention to anything. I not, not paying attention at all. But I was trying to do so much so fast all at once that my energy was scattered in a thousand different places and I wasn't present with whatever task I was working on. And yeah, mistakes were happening and they were the most ridiculous mistakes, like when I tell you. Anyway, so I stopped. I recognized I was doing too much. I recognized enough was enough and I said when. And then I started to assess what I needed to do, what could be put off, what I could be delegate, where I could ask for help and what can just be, you know, just let it go. It's not even worth it. And then I started to have the conversations and I just stopped trying to take on more. I stopped putting up my hand. I stopped volunteering to help out and all and do all the things. I recognize where people were making me feel, um, you know, where what I was doing wasn't enough and and they were pointing out how much more they needed. And I, I fought the urge to put up my hand and say, I will do that. 
you know, especially with my with with my parents, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, as your parents start to get older, oftentimes, you know, and they're struggling with health issues, like I've noticed in my dad lately, like he's become a bit of a crusty, <laughs> older dude. Um, and sometimes he can, you can do a million things for him and he'll just like harp on the one thing that wasn't done that you didn't even know was an expectation. Oh, but you didn't do this. And I don't have this. And, this. and, and that's just a byproduct of my God, like getting older, living a full life, having like struggled through your fair share. And now, you know, you're a bit disgruntled, right? Um, but it really takes a toll on me when when that happens. And my 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 first instinct is to jump through hoops to make sure that he's happy. And well, part of me just needed to recognize that, you know, this is who he is now. And maybe, you know, I do everything that I can for him. And if he's still not happy or if he still feels like something is missing, then that's OK. You know, I can only do my best. And, you know, it's so hard to resist that urge to just jump through hoops and do everything that everyone else needs or wants from you to the point of burning yourself out. But then, you know, it doesn't serve anybody because what that creates is a toxic attachment where people are constantly expecting more. You're constantly feeling like what you do is enough and now you're becoming resentful and that resentful is now also creating an additional layer of toxic. It's, it's just a, it's just a melting pot of toxicity is what it is. So I resisted the urge to do more and put up my hand and help and and take on additional tasks and I would just breathe. And it was really hard to fight that urge to do more and to just take it on or to not delegate or to not ask for help and just do the fucking thing and take it off my plate. It felt like my entire body just wanted to do the thing, whatever it was. Like it just wanted to just do the thing. It's the path. It was the path of least resistance. And for me saying no, saying I can't asking for help or delegating it to somebody else felt so hard. I had to resist the urge to do the thing, to put up my hand, to volunteer my help. I had to fight it. I had to just sit there and I had to sit with that feeling of discomfort and I had to breathe through it. And I had to recognize how it was making me feel, bringing up the feelings. If I don't do this, I'm not good. I'm not going to be pleasing people. My not enoughness will be obvious to the world. <laughs> I had to breathe through that and stop myself and say, no, it's okay. Breathe. I've done enough. I've done so much. I am tired. I am depleted. And I am no use to anybody. If I'm feeling this way and I can't keep up, I need to just give to myself right now. I need time. I need space. I need rest. I need, um, I need to focus on other things that are a bigger priority right now that I want to give my attention to and to do well and just stop and literally talk myself off that cliff of, oh my God, no, I can't say no. This feels so uncomfortable. I have to do the thing. And if I don't do the thing, nobody's going to love me if I don't do the thing. Stop. Breathe. Pause. Talk to your talk yourself off that cliff. Remind yourself that you are enough, that you are safe, that you are loved, that you are worthy, that you deserve space, you deserve rest, you deserve time, you deserve ease, you deserve flow, and you deserve to pay attention to the more pressing things that require a mindful, your mindful and present attention versus your scattered, I'm going to do a million things all at the same time. Do less. The things you take care of will thank you for it. The people you do it for will thank you for it because you will do, you will, you will do these things better and you will feel better and show up as your best self in the process. Reassess your plate. Again, what are the things you have to do versus the things that, you know, are, are nice to have versus the things you can delegate or ask for help with, and then align to the things that are most important. And put your focus and mindful attention there. And make sure you're taking the time to rest and replenish yourself. These are the simple things that we've been taught not only not to do, but that are bad to do. And we have to start to rewire those beliefs. And the fastest way to start rewiring those beliefs is to start... um, programming ourselves with a new belief that it is healthy for me to not do too much because I show up better 
for the people who I love and I can support them better if I can just focus on the things that truly matter. And if I can take care of myself and nourish myself and show up as my best self so that I can be a better partner, mother, sister, friend, worker, boss. If we're not making the decision and trying to teach ourselves to do things differently and believe things differently, then we're never going to change because no one is ever going to give us the permission to say, hey, babe, you've done enough. Stop. Let me take it from here. Sometimes that happens, but it's very rare. And I truly believe that when that does happen, it's because in some way, shape or form, we've already energetically said, hey, I'm saying when enough is enough. Can't take on anymore. Nope. Not, not available for it. I'm going to start to pass off some of the stuff to someone else. I'm going to start to say, no, I'm going to start to ask for help. I'm going to start to set the fucking boundaries. And you know what? That's when the person usually shows up to say, Hey, let me take something off your plate for you. But you've got to take action first to show that enough is enough. You've got to say when and not just say it. You have to really mean it and say, That you're going to not do all the things and decide that, no, I am not doing everything anymore. And then in some way, shape or form, and this will look different for everybody, but you will be supported, even if it is really fucking uncomfortable at first. So that just about wraps this up. Let me know wherever you're seeing this podcast, what your most powerful takeaways are, and let me know what is the one thing that you're going to commit to doing differently to start creating your best hot mess life today, even if you have taken on way too much. (laughs) Um, Don't forget to follow, share, and leave a review. And also always know that I do want to hear from you. If there's anything that you're struggling with, curious about, or just dying to know, hit me up at maria at thefemcoach.com and let me know all about it. I always do my best to get back to every email and who knows, you just might inspire the next episode of the Femcast. That is all for now. Until next time, massive love. You've made it to the end of the episode, which could only mean one thing, and that is that you are truly committed to creating your best hot mess life. And for that, I am totally celebrating you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Tune in every single week for more hot mess inspo and tips, and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Your experience at the Femcast means the world to me. So leave an honest review. And don't forget to go to my website at thefemcoach.com to get free and instant access to the best hot mess life meditation and daily planner so that you too can start living your best hot mess life today. Last but not least, don't forget to connect with me on the gram at the Femcast. That is all for now. Here's to living your best hot mess life. Until next time, massive love.